Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for tonight is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. The Word of God is powerful and has the power to transform the lives of people. Often in Scripture, they talk about the the Word of God being like a two-edged sword. The Word of God is powerful. It is active. Paul talks about this in his letter to, the, to the, the church of the Thessalonians. When you read through it the first time, Paul talks a lot about these people. And it kind of follows the same format as every other epistle or letter, same word, um, of how it goes. He starts off and he greets them. He says who he's talking to and, and the hope that they have. Then he always moves in, in every letter, and he starts talking about the thanksgiving that he has. What they have to rejoice in. What God is doing among those people. So he introduces them, and then he talks about things that he is thankful for. In every letter he does this, besides Galatians. Galatians, he, they had some bigger problems, so there wasn't much to give thanks for at that time. He, he cut right to the chase. But for the church of the people of, in the Thessalonians, he gives thanks, and he says that they are wonderful examples. He says that they are, they are doing well, that they are known. The gospel came to you not only in word, but in power. The mentioning in their prayers that their message has been going out in Macedonia and Achaia. He says, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. You became an example to all believers. It seems like he's talking just about the people and what the people have been doing and everything that the people have accomplished. But if we look a little bit closer, Paul is actually talking about the Word and the Word that is going out and the power that the Word has had among them. See, he's talking about the people, but he's talking about how God's Word has transformed their community and how it has transformed the followers of Christ. Often when we think about the Word of God and we talk about it being active and alive and we talk about the Word of God, a lot of times we just think of this as the Word of God. That just the Bible is the Word of God. That those things are synonymous. But, but they're not. See, when we look at the Word of God, we're not saying it's an equal sign, but the Word of God is greater than and equal to the Bible. The Word of God is not just the Bible. See, the Word of God is when God's Word rightly goes out. It's that person, that friend that we have, who when we're down, picks us up and gives us the encouragement that Jesus is still with us. It's that friend that when we've kind of stepped out of our bounds, stepped out of line, and we have a good friend, we all need one of these, that kind of rebukes us and, right, and brings us right back to where we should. We should all have a friend like that. One that's going to correct our sin and bring us back. That is the word of God going out. The word of God is God speaking to us. God is speaking to us through his sacraments. He is speaking to us through prayer. The word of God is alive and active and it is working among us. It's working to the church of the Thessalonians and it is working among us here today too. For people that are founded on God's word and use that as the foundation of who they are, they are, they are linked with that word of God. They have that as their core. Paul writes, Because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. This word of God is powerful. It is, it is driven out and it is told by the Holy Spirit as he works through people, and it is given full conviction. Not shying away, but being boldly preached. The Word of God does not take a back seat. And when we look at the Word of God, when, when, we, when we realize that it is communicating God's relationship to us, first off, we learn that it often then takes us for concern for our neighbor. See, we can't look into the Word of God and not, not think about the neighbors and the people that God has put before us. The Word of God it forces us to think about the people we sit next to in the pew, but the people we live next to, the people we work next to, the random people we meet as we go about our day. The Word of God drives us to think about those people and God's care for them. 
because God's love for you, we look to love others. So we look differently at our family. I, our family is a unit that God has placed me into where I have responsibilities and that I need to care for them. We look differently at our community, not just as a place where we happen to be, we happen to live and if it goes poorly, oh well. No, God has placed us into this community where we are to serve and love and to be his light. We're looking differently. We look differently because of the word of God from the poor and the needy. That those people are given God's grace. That we are to care for them in any way that we possibly can. We look differently at those in power because God has placed them in authority. We look differently at everybody that we meet because we see them as children of God as you and I are. We see them as created by the creator. The word of God changes us. It is powerful and it transforms. This past week, I had a couple um, shut-in visits, people who can't get to church, so we go out and we see them. And uh, at Calvary, we would had a pastor doing this before, Pastor Jack, and um, he has been wanting to retire, so now that we have a second pastor, it's kind of gotten off his plate. He was really happy about it. So Pastor B and I have been starting to do our shut-in visits, and I had never met any of these people. So I was looking at the map, and um, the ones that I have for this month, about three of them were grouped together on the Kansas side. So I decided I'm going to take half a day, and I'm going to go do all three in one day. The three did not go as I planned. It, 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 it was different. So I, I went to the first one, and um, I had a hard time finding the place. My GPS wasn't getting me there, so I had to park, and I walked about a mile and a half around this building until I finally got to the front door. Then I had to um, convince the front desk worker that, I, yes, I was actually old enough to be a pastor and that I should be let in to see this person. Once I got through that clearance, it worked out okay. So I walked in, and um, the first woman that I saw had um, advanced dementia. And so we kind of had the same conversation over and over and over. You guys are nodding. You've been in this situation. So you, you, hear, the, you hear the same questions, and you just— answer them with bravado, and you just keep on going through. Wonderful woman. It was a wonderful time. Um, but you got to have that rhythm and get into the same things. I, uh, I asked her before I left um, if, we, if we could pray the Lord's Prayer together. And she said, yeah, sure, okay. So I prayed the Lord's Prayer. I think she picked up a couple of words. Wonderful, okay? But I said, all right, I got two more. We're going we're gonna to see. I go to the next one, and I had come right after lunch, and the second person that I saw um, did not have a good lunch. She was not having a good day. Um, and this person, she repeats a lot of things. And so when I went in there, I was talking with her. I said, I'm the new pastor at Calvary, and my name is Pastor Tim. And she kept repeating to me, you need to leave now. You need to leave now. You need to leave now. So I said, are, are you sure? I just got here, and I would love to do it. And said, no, you need to leave now. You need to leave now. I said, okay, well, would you mind if I pray the Lord's Prayer? She didn't really say anything. So, so we prayed the Lord's Prayer together, and I was off on my way. Off to my third one. All right, I got one more. Went to the third one, and this was at a, a smaller group home. So there was about six people receiving care and about two people um, giving care. Um, really small, intimate setting. I thought, oh, this is going to be wonderful. The third person I saw um, um, did not talk. Um, he can talk. He has the ability to, but 99.9% .9 of the time, he does not open his mouth and speak. I did not know that going in. So I was sitting by him, and we were talking, or I, I was talking, and um, it was going, okay. So I, I got up, and I was talking to some of the other workers, and I came back in, and we were sitting on this couch, and he had sprawled out on the couch, and he was fast asleep. <laughs> so I didn't wake him up. He was sleeping. I don't want to be waking up. So I just let him sleep. Um, before that, we did pray the Lord's Prayer together, too. Um, I prayed it, and, and he listened. It was not exactly the day that I wanted. It didn't really go how I had planned it. This happened to me once before when I was on vicarage, or internship for a pastor um, in Georgia. And I remember I had come home that day after a bad visit or two, and I was really discouraged. I remember saying to Courtney, my wife, and just, I, 
I, I should have said this, I could have done this, I, I could have, you know, called before. I, I had all these lists of, of what I should have done and, and how I had fallen short and, and everything that I had done wrong that day. But this past week, when I saw these three people, I had a different take. I was driving home, and I, I, I pulled off the side of the road because some, some thoughts were coming to me, and, and I jotted them down. Thinking about that day and those three visits, I, I, I wrote, if I saw myself as a salesman with a product that I had that I needed these people to buy— instead of a proclaimer of God's word sent with a message of salvation in Jesus Christ, if I saw them as people that I was selling to, I would have been really disappointed in that day. If I saw these individuals based on their work and what they were contributing to society, or if I saw them as a burden or a drain of resources instead of a child of God that, just like me, is defined by what God has done for me, not what I can do for God, if I saw them as a burden and a drain of resources, I would have been really disappointed by that day. If I saw my job as a pastor, as, as the burden of bringing people to faith, that it was my words and my actions of what everything I could do to bring these people to faith, instead of the Holy Spirit working through me, working with these people as God's word is powerful and active, and the Holy Spirit working through those words and those actions and those presence and his, and his servants like, that, that he sends out, if I had thought that the whole burden was on me and it was all about my actions, I would have been really, really disappointed in that day. If I saw the Lord's Prayer that I prayed three times, basically by myself, if I saw that just as a boring old prayer um, that has no meaning anymore, if I saw it as that instead of a prayer that was given to us from Jesus Christ's lips himself as a model of prayer, if I saw it as just a boring old prayer, I would have thought the day was a big disappointment. Overall, if I thought that my life and faith were all about me and my accomplishments and what I could bring before God and what I had to do for these people, I would have been sorely and utterly disappointed in that day. But I wasn't disappointed. I wasn't disappointed because I read in Scripture that God's word never comes back empty, that when God's word goes out, he has an intended purpose for it, and it will achieve just what God wills. That no actions of my own or the burden is not on me or it's not my accomplishments or how I can perfectly say it or it's not about these people responding to me in the way that I want them to respond, but instead it is about God's word going out and being powerful and active. Because of that, I saw this day as a wonderful opportunity that God's word was proclaimed three times to three individuals that needs, God, that needs God's grace just as much as I do. That is not a disappointment. That is a reason to celebrate. When God's word goes out and people are hearing the saving message of Jesus Christ, we rejoice. Not because of what we do or the response or anything, but because God is alive and active and working through his word. The gospel message that the Thessalonians were given and declared and that Paul praised them for, that they had done, that people were, that they were known for their faithfulness to Jesus Christ, that same gospel message that they proclaimed is the same gospel that you and I hold today. It's the same message that is still going out, that the gospel, that there is a true and there is a living God and he is alive and he is powerful. And this God had a son. He still does. And this son came to earth and died. And out of his love, God did not stop there, but God overturned this by raising his son from the dead. And now this son living in, in heaven, seated at the right hand, will return and save us from our idols. Anything that distracts us from following God. That God came down, arose, and will come back. For Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. This is the gospel message that we hold on to that is alive and active in God's word. Through no doings of our own, but through the work of the Holy Spirit. 
may we as a church, as individuals, proclaim this message boldly and loudly that there is forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. May we declare this message to our families, to our friends, to our city, our community, to Waldo, to Kansas City. And may we declare this message even to the world. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your word, not just the words that we have written in scripture, but the ways in which you speak to us. Lord, we see and we know that your word is alive and active, and it is working in the lives of people and transforming them. Not making them having their best life now or anything like that, but giving them the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. In this we rejoice. Lord, make us servants that boldly proclaim this message to those we know. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.